Hello and welcome to episode 29 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. And Brad is not feeling too well. You can say I'm far below under the weather. <laughs> I'm puking. I feel dizzy. It sucks. But you could record. Yeah. Okay. That's all that matters. I went and took a 10 minute nap. Uh, with my CPAP on, and I was like, okay, I could get out of bed for an hour or two to do this. Just now you took a nap? Like, when you're like I'm going to go lay down. Yeah. She fell asleep heck of quick. <laughs> oh. That's what happens when you're sick. So I think I have a tonic here. If you guys want to try this drink I provided and try to guess what it is. It looks orange, and it has some sort of carbonation. I know. I didn't even take a drink yet, and I know what it is. Ah! <laughs> It's fucking gamer fuel. <laughs> That's what I was gonna guess. It is. Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? They just brought it up for the gay box one. <laughs> and they have a purple one too. I didn't get the purple one though because I I couldn't find it. I bought four of them. So if there if you want more, there's more in the fridge. Nice. Thanks. For what? For uh, bottles. bottles. It. I actually went to the chef because I saw it at the Seven Eleven by my house. And they had the purple one and the orange one. I was like, I'm going to get that on the way to Brad's. And then I went to Fuji and stuff. Fucking third week in a row I went to Fuji. Because Jamila wanted to go. Then You're I took upset? No, no. <laughs> then um, I, was, I planned a date with um, my brother-in-law and Willie to go. But he canceled. So it was just me and him. And then today I called up. It was supposed to be me. My brother-in-law, Brad, and Matt. Brad got sick. My brother-in-law canceled again. So it was just me and Matt. And then he brought Mia and his wife. And um, it's pretty good. <laughs> they have a, a, a new roll that I uh, tried. It's called Who's the Man? Mm, no. It's a hand roll. So it's in yeah, the cone. The cone. It's good. It's I'm... got sriracha and grilled tuna inside of it. When I go to PK Sushi, I get the Lin roll. It's so good. Mm. It's uh, a, it's a soy wrap with rice, uh, some cut up fried shrimp, avocado, and a special cream sauce. Awesome. Sounds pretty good. What are they referring to with Lin? Do you know? I think that's the chef. Uh, Not Jeremy Lin. That's kind of what I was thinking. Actually, was Jeremy Lin. That's the name. I, I had to guess his first name. Who's Jeremy Lin? A player poker. No. <laughs> he's a basketball player. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but he's actually, well, he's American, but he's Chinese American. He's not Japanese. So. Oh, is he the, like, the Lin guy who they were making fun of? That's Yao Ming. Making fun of him? Yeah, like a chink in his armor. That's Yao uh, Ming. <laughs> no, it was Jeremy Lin. Yeah, that, that's right. Oh, um, was it Jeremy Lin? I thought it was Yao Ming. What, when, the thing that Brandon's referring to is, yes. Oh, okay. Because he came on, like, gangbusters, like, a couple of years ago when he was playing for New York. Like, he just came out of nowhere, basically. So there was a lot of stuff written about him. And then he had a few bad games. And, like you said, someone wrote an article where the headline was, a chink in Lin's armor or something like that. <laughs> of course, he's a Chinese man and somewhat offensive. <laughs> so what do you think of the game fuel? I like it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's like a melted-down cherry icy. Yes. Um... So, treasure hunting for the week. Treasure hunting. So, where did you find your items? Dimple. I found mine at the Five and Dime by my house. Oh, that janky place? Yep. Let me move this so my germs don't jump onto your cup. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, we were at the... Real in the Knights football game last night. The ch the playoffs against the Antelope Titans. My son plays for the Titans. Of course, freshmen didn't go. It was varsity, so I was making fun of them all the live long day. Making fun of who? The Antelope. Because this guy, he it was fourth down and he punted it. It was a six-yard punt. <laughs> <laughs> and I told my wife, I was like, I can come farther than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, who, were you on the home side? We went on the home side first, and then after halftime, we went to the antelope side. After the sun died down? Or, you know, it was probably already dark. It was huh? already dark. Yeah. Here's my first item. Oh, Sonic Adventure. Cool. There's a uh, limited edition. Oh, I was going to say it would be tied if it's limited edition. That's cool. Yep. 
I have a repeat too. Oh really? Repeat item, yeah. Is it Batman Returns? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you want me to show my other one? Oh hold on. I'll show mine, but uh I sold that Spider Man Friend or Foe video game. The yeah. DS one I the some guy he finally messaged me saying I push start and it takes me to choose a file and I push A and it does nothing. What do I do? Like I'm supposed to troubleshoot for him. Huh. <laughs> Did you say try the stylus? No, I said uh, maybe push start, and then he never messaged me back. <laughs> <laughs> a bottle of Hennessy. It looks like an empty bottle of Hennessy. I found that today at uh, Fuji. It was just sitting out in the grass. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know what bum touched that and fucked it and just on it. That's gross. That's a repeat. No. <laughs> it's another heroin spoon. You found yeah. it in the the yeah. Hennessy bottle. A DS game. Yep. Spider Man friend or foe. Oh Kirby, another Kirby game. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. How much was that? Three dollars. Here's my final item. Is this going to the collection? No. Selling it? Yep. Oh, wow. Ninja Gaiden 2. Yep. How much is that worth? Like 15. Tight. The Dark Ship of Chaos? Yep. A sword. Three's, three's worth more, but two's worth some, so. Oh, it's a sword. Three is just Ancient Shape of Doom. Ancient Shape of Doom. And then um, they also had Kung Fu Heroes Complete. It's only worth nine bucks. They had oh, this wow. game called Evolution for Dreamcast. I, was only I thought 14. you were going to say Evolution for SNES. Oh, heck no. I would have picked that up like a motherfucker. Um, and they also had Robo Warrior Complete. Remember the fake where we thought it was Robocop? Oh, so, yeah. And then they had Low G Man Complete. So, no. Wow. I put all those on hold because I didn't bring my phone. The one day I go to Dimple and don't bring my phone. So then I um, took my. After I left work, and I took my mom home. We went there first. It was another half, sorry, another half hour in traffic, but it was worth it. So you took mom home first instead of going to no. Oh, okay. I took. Uh, I was like, if you're going home with me, we're going to go to Dimple. Is that okay? <laughs> did she Did she get anything? No. I think she went and looked at the X-rated movie. <laughs> when you say Evolution for SNES, is that EVO? Yes, that game is awesome. It's worth. 100. You actually got to play it. Yeah. Ken, wow. I think Ken had never it, played it before. No, it's so I, rare. I played it on the really? emulator. I didn't know it was that rare. Yeah. We should have done like what Ken Cheney did with the uh, Ogre Battle. Yes. And just taken it from the rental store yep. where we got it. <laughs> That's tough. Is that rental store still open? <laughs> no. There was this, oh, it was so weird. Whenever I stayed the night over there, his mom would take him to this one particular place to rent video games. And we lived in Rolanda, and the place was at Arden and Watt. Wow. It's called like Placer Video or something like that. They always had really good games. I played a lot of rare games there. Wow. Maybe, I don't know if they're really rare. You guys would know better than I would. But I definitely did see them at like a Blockbuster or I guess at the time there was Hollywood Video or maybe there was a Mr. Video at the time. Mm. I don't remember. Blockbuster, rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of great memories going there. Pour some games. game fuel out for it. No, don't put them on the floor. <laughs> and here's my last item. Oh, you have another item? Yeah. It only got, it was only a dollar. That's why I picked it up. I didn't even check the price until just now. Oh, okay. Oh, Lament of Innocence, Castlevania. Was that like six? Yeah. Uh, five loose, seven complete, so six. Tight. Do you have, did that have a book? Nope. Oh. I hope you didn't lose, Brad, because you're not in the best shape to take any punishment. <laughs> we we decided that we're going to do punishments only like once a month or twice a month. Bummer. Because, uh, well, maybe once we get the whole wheel situated and the whole, um, I, before I, so I stop losing the list. <laughs> maybe if I get it saved on the computer or something, then we'll do it more frequent. But I had no time to get this t punishment pleasure will prize list together. Do you have a laminator? No. Oh, I was going to say maybe if you laminate it, you won't lose it. A I, list? Still, I, I still might lose it. It's, it's really hard to save something onto a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I understand why you haven't done that yet. You know what I was thinking when we recorded over at your house, I think it was last week, Brandon, that 
the was it called the lazy susan or whatever it's called uh-huh. the thing in the middle that thing spin, <laughs> spins really well yeah it, it could be used as a wheel <laughs> <laughs> you could find a lazy susan at the goodwill yeah i just have to get it together i might just go out and buy a prize wheel and uh rig it up so it has more options and i'll just post it on there like price is right style yeah or we could just do like an app or something but we'll figure it out Mm -hmm. we'll have a treasure hunting for nostalgia app the pain and punishment yeah (laughs) top five this week huh yep oh wait wait. what do we want to do uh game of the week oh yeah let's do game of the week i'll go first because i didn't play it all this week (laughs) (laughs) well done (laughs) i was thinking about it but uh I just didn't, I couldn't find time. Like, every time I tried to do it, I, I always fell asleep. So. I got a chance to play for a few hours. I'm still playing Lufia 2. Uh, the last time we recorded, but uh, I had, I was at the Dankirk Kingdom, and I was uh, resolving a feud between Dankirk and the Aurelio Kingdom, because uh, the Queen of Dankirk, one of the, uh, what are they called, the Ruby, Ruby. Icon or something like that, so I finally got the Ruby icon, and I settled that feud, and that granted me access to um, more of the map, because I think once you do that, the Raleo Kingdom opens up a bridge so that you mm-hmm. can... Go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can use your boat or ship or whatever to, to get through there. Uh, so after that, um, at this point, you're chasing after another Sinistral. His name is Amon. He's the Master of Chaos. And, of course, earlier in the game, you killed... Um, What's his name? Ed. Gates. Gates. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I, I, we're basically chasing him around. Uh, we have, like I said, Lexus, who is a uh, scientist or an engineer. He, he he's an inventor, basically. He runs into uh, a character named Doctor Kirmo in Protravia, and they are working on the, the the ship that Lexus had created. It's called the Exerion. And they work together to, to make it into a submarine. Uh, just as they were about to complete that, an elf comes into the lab and steals the the, the blueprints. Do you guys remember this part? I do. The, an elf comes along and steals the blueprints for it, so you have to chase down this elf. And you realize that uh, the elf stole the blueprints because the lab that they were working in was creating some sort of ooze that was uh, oh, yeah. dumping into the ocean. There's like a hippie elf, I guess. <laughs> the elf's name was Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so, so Lexus hears this elf out and says, "Oh, I promise not to pollute the ocean anymore. I'll use some sort of clean form of energy." The elf agrees, and they, the the elf gives them the blueprints back, and they create this submarine. Once they uh, create the submarine, you you chase uh, Amon. Excuse me. Actually, before that, you uh, chase Amon to um, I think it's the Divine Temple. That's what it was called. Because uh, there's a uh, another elf named Karen that uh, Amon had kidnapped. Oh, isn't this elf uh, blonde? I don't remember whether or not she was blonde. Uh, Karen had the uh, power to unleash some sort of sealed power. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's why Amon ca- uh, kidnapped her and brought her to the D- Divine Temple. Divine, is it the temple? Yeah, Divine Temple. Uh, she refuses to do it. Amon's basically pissed off. But uh, he's basically going to night annihilate both Karen and the party once Maxim finally gets there and catches up to him. But instead of that, Karen uses her power to basically uh, banish Amon. Huh. He, she doesn't... He, he's not, like, dead or anything. He, she, she just gets him out of that temple so that she, he can't hurt anyone else. But w- in doing that, she also made a martyr of herself, basically. She she oh. dies, kind of like Tela style, where hmm. he tries to use that spell and he just dies afterwards. So the, after she uses the power, she dies. Uh, you because of this, you uh, acquire the uh, the assistance of a elf named Artia or Artie. Uh-huh. Artie's like a Yeah, he's pretty cool. Once you acquire Artie, uh, Lexus stays behind and so you fucking god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Lexus didn't bother me too much. So you have uh, I think it's Maxim, uh, Salon or Selene, however you want to say it. Artie and it, the last guy is. It's not Guy, is it? It's either Guy or Decker. Is it Decker? I don't think it's Decker. It might be Guy then. Or maybe only have three people. No, I definitely have four. I'm trying to remember who the fourth guy is right now. 
anyway, I, I, I should know because I'm playing it, but I don't. So anyway, uh, once you uh, acquire RD services, you get the submarine from Lexus, and then you're able to go to this uh, this new temple. It's called the Shrine of Vengeance, which is where Amon goes next. Uh, it's I, I think the the temple entrance is like blocked off, so you have to go under under it. And that's what the submarine is good mm-hmm. for, and that's basically where I'm at now. I actually got to the well, at least I think it's the end of the uh, what's it called the Shrine of Vengeance, but I saved there and. I figured I'll pick it up sometime this week weekend. So, did you have to find the different pieces of metal yet, like sixteen? No, that's at the that's later on. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, I don't recognize that. I hate that part. <laughs> I just remember having a, a, a hatred for it. Man, it's killing me that I don't know who that fourth character mm-hmm. is. I don't think it's Guy. I thought Guy li- leaves him at some point. No, it is it is Guy because he he doesn't have a, a magic ability. And Decker leaves him, but I can't remember why he left him, but it's definitely Guy. So my party is Guy, Maxim, Salon, or Selene, and Artie. Okay. That's where I'm at right now. I'm in the Shrine of Vengeance, uh, still chasing Amon around. Cool. Did you want to go into any of your game of the week? Uh, Pokemon, I've uh, found Tyranitar's Mega Illusion Stone. It's only on Pokemon X Mm -hmm. and also Garchomp's. So sick. So in in lieu of Garchomp and uh, the other one, Tyranitar. Uh, yeah. Um, what's the Y exclusive? Do you know? Uh, Agron. Oh, okay. Kind of stupid. Yeah, Agron. But um, you get Garchomp in Y. And uh, I got my first outstanding stat Pokemon, which is my Tyranitar. Mm-hmm. They, it seems like they've nerfed Starmie some because I'm not winning with Starmie. Mm. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to switch it out. I'm breeding a Breloom now. Do you have a modest one? Yeah. That's probably why. Maybe you need a timid one. No, timid lowers special attack. It's like even the modest one, it's not hitting as hard as the other games. Mm. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And so I'm just still playing that. Top five this week. Top five Nintendo sixty four games. Yeah, I actually kind of had a hard time with this one. Yeah, because there's, I don't know if there were really any RPGs other than like Zelda and I think maybe Harvest Moon or something like that. Quest Quest sixty four, one of the first games released. I don't even remember that. That was the first role playing game released that sucked. Uh, I really liked it. Jeff Sweet was like, "This game's stupid." I was like, "I like it." I mean, it definitely wouldn't make my list, but uh, it was pretty good. Did you guys play Harvest Moon? No, no we only read about it. It was supposed to be a really fun game. Really? Yeah, I never played it either. When we got made that huge score, um, we went to Folsom. That guy had a Harvest Coffee for Harvest Moon, but he wanted like thirty bucks for it. So. Yeah, so it's uh, my list contains a lot of kind of just fun games, really. Mm. Not a lot of like games that require a lot of thought. Yeah. I uh, guess I guess I'll start since okay. I'm talking about it. Uh my number five is Super Smash Brothers. Hmm. Um really cool idea. They just use a lot of their um primetime characters and had them fight each other. And you know that it's still a it's a franchise that's still around now. They keep making them for each new system each new console that they come out with. Um It's also fun because it's it's super easy to play. I mean, you can get away with button mashing in that game, and you still have, you're still going to have a good chance of winning. Or if you want to practice it, I mean, you're going to get better, and eventually you're going to be able to beat those button mashers. But <laughs> just just playing it and sitting down with some a lot of friends to play it and button mashing, it's it's good times. And like I said, the characters are cool. I mean, you got to play with uh, Link, Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, um, some Star Fox characters like Star Fox himself, uh, Falcon. Captain Falcon was in there, uh, Samus was in there, and I think some Pokemon characters were in there as well. Kirby. I, I don't really care about that shit. <laughs> yeah, Kirby was in there also. I wrote, let me see if I got anything else. I think that's all the characters. Do you remember any other was ones? Was Jigglypuff a secret character? And DK, Donkey Kong was Oh, Donkey there. Kong, that, that, was the, that was the one that I left out, yeah. I don't like that porch monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it back, huh? <laughs> of course, in the later games, they they introduced new uh, new characters, which was cool. 
And I'm particularly looking forward to the the one for Wii U with Mega Man. Yeah, that's that sweet. Tight. I like when he jumps, he still has his arm up. Yeah. Like in the 2-bit or 8-bit. <laughs> that's tight. So that's my number five, Super Smash Brother. My number five is going to have to be Pokemon Snap. Oh, I, that almost went my list. That game's heck of fun. Uh, so I, I'm assuming Nick never played Pokemon Actually, Snap. that was the one Pokemon I actually did attempt to play. I, didn't, <laughs> I have no fucking clue how, what I was doing the whole time. It's like, what is the fucking point of this? So I'm interested in hearing so what, basically, what your justification for this is. <laughs> you, you, you go through a, a, a level, a scenery, like an ocean, a cave, and you're on a rail. You're in a vehicle and you're on, on a rail like roller coaster. And you're uh, going through and taking pictures of Pokemon in their natural habitat. You could like throw an apple near a surfboard and Pikachu will go jump on the surfboard and pose for you. That gives you heck of points. And basically the reason why I, kept, I picked it was you could take your pictures and you could also add captions to them. So we made some heck of funny pictures. <laughs> and uh, just you got to search for all the Pokemon. And the more Pokemon you find, the more levels get unlocked. And eventually you get to the rainbow level where you find Mew. Mm-hmm. So that's it, just finding all the Pokemon, having them come out of their habitat. Like, there'll be golems hanging on the wall. You have to throw a bomb at them, and they fall down and pose for you and dance. Yeah. It's cool. I don't get it. (laughs) Based on the clarity of the picture and the Pokemon's stance, you get points at the end of the level. I don't get it. I remember there was one picture we took that Magmars looked like they were having sex, and they had to laughing at it. It sounds almost like like a Mario Paint type game where it's just you're trying to be creative, but there's not really a, an objective. But I guess there is because you're trying to get the best pose. I don't know. I got it if you want to play it. No, Let me right. go. It's... Yeah, that's all right. I'm going to pass on that one. Uh, number five on my list uh, is Jet Force Gemini. Uh, have you guys played that? I never played it, and I was, disliked it. Why? Because I didn't play it. <laughs> I... I think you didn't like it because it's one of those type of adventure games like Banjo-Kazooie and DK64 where you have to collect stuff. But um, you, there's three different characters. You could pick a boy, a girl, or a dog. And you go to various planets fighting all these different bugs. It's kind of like... Starship Troopers meets Pokemon. Yeah, have you um, played Star Fox Adventure? No, I... I played a little demo of it, but not much. Uh, Spyro, you're the dragon. I don't like Spyro. Spyro. Spyro's tight. I don't like Spyro. It's it's basically a third person uh, shooter where you're walking through and these hordes of bugs come at you and uh, you go to different planets and hoard off these bugs. But like halfway through the game, you think you're done, but you're not. You get upgrades to your armor and you get to go back to the different levels and get stuff you haven't gotten before. It's heck of tight. And I remember that was like when the first N64 game that when I when you walked with the female character, her boobs would bounce. Nice. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't see that part. Yep. <laughs> boobs are great. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It was tight. Uh, my number four is Star Fox 64. It was the first game released by the N64 to utilize the Rumble Pack. Um, that was my number four as well. Dude, that was my number four too. <laughs> nice. All right, well, we could all talk about it. Yeah, so we could talk about it. Um, did you guys ever play the multiplayer mode on that? Yes. Yeah. I, that was a really strong. It's it, d- it definitely influenced my uh, my voting in terms of where Star Fox sixty four ranked. It might not have even made my list if it wasn't for the multiplayer mm-hmm. mode. The multiplayer mode was great. Um, it was a battle mode. It was it was almost like doing like a dog fight. Like, yeah. <clears throat> like Top Gun style. Top Gun. Yeah. Uh, and I also like that um, depending on how you beat the level, it would uh, change you know what path you t- yeah. took in the game. That was really cool. Also, um, they also utilized the uh, the fact that they could actually use voice tracks now with the N sixty four, so the characters actually had voices to them. It came to life. Yeah, exactly. And of course, I mean it's it's the same characters from uh, the original Star Fox and uh, that was on released for the SNES, but. They're all. Some of them are annoying, but they definitely have like characteristics. So it's it's kind of cool that they, they some even though you don't you only see them for a few seconds at a time, you kind of know, what, you know the char- different characteristics of each one of them. So it's kind of a cool game. I liked uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention about this game. I liked how at the end of the level you got a medal based on your merit of the level. That's if true. You I forgot about that. Kept yeah. all your players alive with a lot of health. Well, I think they just had to be alive. 
you would get more points and you could like you said branch off I like the tumbler level where on the land yeah, yeah yeah that was awesome and I also liked the um the Independence Day level that was my favorite where it had the huge space ship and you had to destroy it before it blew up the, the huh. one of the planets that's tight that was heck oh. Um, and it was free roaming. It's not like yeah, 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 yeah. So could, I want like to... Randy Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> that was tight. <laughs> what? I, I, I didn't get it. Independence Day. When oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. I forgot he was in that. Uh, or Bill Pullman. <laughs> the VHS that we got for it, yeah. we watched it like fifty thousand times. Oh man, that was amazing. <laughs> Did you get that? The VHS for Independence Day? No, for <laughs> for Star Fox. No, I don't recall. I don't remember that. They had a whole plot. It was like someone kidnapped Mario or someone kidnapped someone. And it was like these villains and they were showing actual screenplay. They showed the Rumble Pack. Huh. And we watched it over and over and it, when it finally came out. It was like, what, 10, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. And uh, how did we get it? It came in the mail? It came in the mail because we signed up for some Nintendo Player Club or something. Yeah. And the last boss is awesome. I think you shoot the giant monkey face and you could shoot him and like doesn't his brain show or something? Like you get remember. him down to just his brain and eyeballs or something. I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't know. That was cool. There's a monkey face? Yeah, Andros. The, the I know I, I know yeah. Andros, I didn't really think it was, it was a like monkey a giant face, monkey. Oh you're right. I'm thinking of Andros from the S N E S version the, where the it was pixelated like yeah, 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 yeah. The mirror. But yeah, you're right. I know what you're talking about now. Cool. Yeah, but that train level did it for me when you had to stop the train. Uh -huh. You had to hit all the switches. And then that was the hardest one that we you get a secret level when you hit all the switches. Yeah. And the um, little the level two when you have to go in the warps and, and you have to hit all the warps to go to the secret level. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. And stupid ass Slippy. Yeah. <laughs> Help me, Fox. He's on my tail. He wasn't very talented. He really doesn't have a tail, does he? Probably because he's a pussy ass frog. Uh, pussy ass frogs have tails. Retarded fish frogs. <laughs> um, Wait. Um, speaking of retarded fish frogs, is is uh, was that South Park episode? Is are they going to do a part two to that? Oh, oh I'm to. sure. Oh, okay. I'm sure it's going to be like the we the we release. Oh, okay. When they went to like thir part thirty six, they skipped like all the. Was it Go God Go or something? What was it called? Oh, was that the one where he froze himself froze him yeah. or something like that? He, <laughs> yeah. he was riding on the ot otters or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was losing my faith in that show until I saw yeah. that episode. That episode really brought it back for me. <laughs> yeah, they have to do a second episode for that. Oh, yeah. It's building up. Mm. The Black Fairy is going to be chaos. <laughs> I, hope pr I hope Professor Chaos makes oh, it tight. <laughs> I was I was waiting for it to come on, and they played the the ninja episode, the anime one. Oh yeah, when fun they, with weapons. Fun with weapons. Yeah, that that I love that episode. Mm -hmm. It's like a sad when Butters takes a shuriken to the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop. Whoop. Yeah, he gets pissed on. They edited that part out, but I got the DVD where it shows it. It's hella funny. I let my kids watch that one. They were hella laughing. Yeah, they edited it. Did you watch it on like public TV? Or yeah, something? it's Comedy Central. Come. Comedy Central didn't hear it? They, they cut out the part where the dog peed on him. Really? Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Songs and that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's on my phone. Let's fight in love. Is that from, from, that's from that one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Anything else about Star Fox? No. Yep. All right. So I guess that was my number four and it was my turn, so I'll do number three. Number three for me is Goldeneye. Probably would have been higher if I didn't hold it responsible for the popularity of first-person shooters now. Yeah. Piece of shit games like Halo, Modern Warfare, Call of Duty. Fuck those games. Battlefield. Oh, God. Ghost Face. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can't stand those games except yeah. for Bioshock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like first-person as long as it's um, got horror elements to it, like Bioshock or Dead Space. I didn't like Resistance. I like Resistance. Um, I like the story. Dead Space isn't first person, is it? Oh, no, it's over the shoulder. Same thing. Yeah, pretty much the same, same thing. Uh, another game that had a really great multiplayer uh, option, multiplayer on this game is just amazing. It's I think it kind of revolutionized uh, the multiplayer option. You had the depending on if you're playing with two players, three players, or four players, but you, each one of you would have your own little quadrant that you'd look at, 
And of course, you could you know sneak a peek over at each other's uh, screen to kind of get an idea of where they were hiding. Talked about a couple of weeks ago about uh, the remote mines and how you could look at the <laughs> look at where they were and decide to detonate them if they were in the the correct area. Um, I saw a video on YouTube uh, a couple days ago that when I was looking at that Super Mario parkour mm. thing that I had posted, uh, there was a real life Golden Eye. Mm. I <laughs> it was funny because I mean playing the game you don't really think about it, but it was just kind of retarded how slow and how inefficient Natalia walks around when she's following you and how she just walks right into like a, a firefight <laughs> and starts <laughs> she, covering her head she walks right into the middle of a firefight there's people there's bullets flying back and forth and she just walks right through the middle of it like, what the fuck are you doing <laughs> so if you if you get a chance just uh, YouTube like real life gold night it's, it's pretty funny and then there's there's a couple parts where she'll just be standing there and you're like what what are you doing come on come on go and she does that shit in the <laughs> game too and then eventually she'll start going. She'll just walk hecka slow. Like there's no sort of urgency at all when you're, you're trying to get somewhere hecka fast. And then <laughs> there's a couple parts where she'll actually just walk into walls and stuff. It's pretty funny. <laughs> you know when she does that the most that I hate it is, uh, remember the train level? Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you have to protect her and uh, at the very end you have to use your watch to cut the uh, security uh, hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have to not only that you have to go out and then escape, like you have to run. Uh-huh. And then she'd stay behind and get blown up so many times. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, come on. <laughs> yeah. The AI could have been a little bit better in the game, but I mean considering how how far that game had come uh compared to games that had come before it, it's I'll forgive him for a little bit of mm-hmm. uh, flawed AI. That's all good. Uh, but even the single player mode, I mean, it basically just mirrored the movie almost exactly. So it's kind of cool. I, I generally don't like games that are based on movies. In fact, they often produce the worst <laughs> games. But this one in particular, they really did very well. And uh, that's going to be my number three pick. My number three pick, I'll take another first person shooter. Oh, wow. Star Wars. Shadows of the Empire. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, that game. That game was awesome. It was you could have different camera angles, third person, <laughs> top view, and of course we played it as first person. That game was awesome. Uh, Dash Rendar took the helm of the game. They had uh, you fought the the ATATs, ATSTs. Uh, in the second level, they were the, in the first level. You of course go on Hoth and you're flying through the plane. After that, you land on the ground. And you're fighting an AT and AT at the or ATSD at the end of the level, and that was I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't really know much about the Star Wars mythology at that point. Uh, I just knew the basics: Luke, Han, Yoda, Darth Vader, but I didn't know like what the machines were called, and that really opened it up for me. I'm not a huge geek, like Star Wars geek, but um, it was a fun game. Uh, my favorite level scared me to death was the sewer level, the oh, giant yeah. Dianoga. For some reason. In game water tanks like that when you're fighting a huge monster and you could just see its big old mouth like you get swallowed always scared me. Like the eel on the Mario, eel on Mario 64. 64 always scared me. I never wanted to go by that thing. <laughs> it's freaky. So that was my number three. My number three is uh, NWO versus WCW. Nice. Uh, one of the first wrestling games to get it right. Uh, you, every character had their pretty much unique set of moves that mirrored their character on the video game. They had their own special taunts. Even though I didn't like the NWO franchise too much, uh, they had the greats like uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan and uh, Black Ninja, who I didn't even know. I found out about him through the game. Raven. Disco He's Inferno. an actual character, Black Ninja? I think or so. Or was he just a made-up character? I thought he was made up. Oh, uh, is he? Maybe he is. Um... Uh, they had, of course, Scott Hall and the Giant. Kevin Nash. Yeah. Sting. Oh, yeah, they did have Sting. And you got, this was the first game, I think, where you got to bring in weapons to the ring. Bats and chairs. Uh, mm. Like Brad said, it's satisfying to hit your opponent with a chair. <laughs> if only we could do it in real life. A punishment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really fun game. Uh, I... I kind of had the same strategy on that game that I had with the uh, that PlayStation Melee or whatever <laughs> game. Taunting. Yeah. <laughs> my, my strategy was to get into like a battle royale and just stand in the corner and dance the whole time. I, just, <laughs> I picked Disco Inferno every time. 
I just danced the whole time. It was like a fun. I mean, it was, it was actually a pretty good strategy because battle royale, you're just trying to hit people out of the ring. If you just stand there and avoid any sort of conflict, <laughs> you're not going to get thrown out of the ring. I, I mean, sometimes you have to little, do a little sidestep maneuver in case someone's flying by you or something. But did you watch all of SmackDown? Mm -hmm. Did anything happen at the end of the with Curtis Axel or Ryback? Like, did anyone betray one another? I don't think so. That was the. It was. That was the one with Brian and uh, CM Punk, yeah. right? And they said they're no longer Paul Heyman guys. Yeah. Well, right back, you kind of knew that because Paul Heyman called him out. Yeah, it was like on, on Raw. I didn't know Curtis Axel was gonna. I didn't know that Curtis yeah. Axel was gonna do that either. It almost seemed like he said that because Ryback was like, "All right, if yeah. you're a Paul Heyman guy, you got a problem with me." Yeah. And then Curtis Axel was like, "Okay, I'm not a Paul Heyman guy." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't. Um, didn't the Wyatts intervene and inter interfere at the end? Of I it or think something? that's what happened. Was the Wyatts came and then, uh, oh, um, Ryback pushed Curtis Axel into them. And like they pushed me, they pushed me. Come on, he pushed me. And then that's when it cut off for me. So I don't know if there's anything. A else. Misunderstanding. Yeah. yeah, you missed your misunderstanding. Yeah. There was another potential for a misunderstanding on SmackDown too. I think it was in the the Divas match or something like that. Like Tam Tamika or Tamika. Oh Tamika yeah. Or yeah, something yeah, happened yeah. with AJ. her and AJ. I can't remember exactly what it was. But it didn't turn into anything. They both left civilly. AJ, AJ needs to drop Tamika like a dirty cunt. Oh, man. <laughs> Tamika saved her uh, championship on... Uh... Yeah, I don't like Tamika. She's too butch for me. <laughs> She's actually got feminine features. I mean, her body's very masculine, but... I mean, if you look at her face, she's obviously female. Whereas, like, a, a China... It's like, uh, I don't know, uh, is, that, yeah. is that a man or a woman? No, I don't know. Man. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, Snuka. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I was like, she's, it's like she could have not lift as many weights to not take on her dad's characteristics. Right. China looked like that. She could jack her foot off, though, like a penis. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's got like a, a nine-incher. Have you have you ever seen a woman taking steroids, what their clits look like? No. And when I worked in the adult entertainment, they I looked up pictures, and they look like heck of long. Yeah. They, they like grow, a, a, it looks like a little penis. Yeah, that's funny. Tangent. <laughs> uh, that was your number three, right? Yeah. All right, my number two is Mario 64. Uh, you know, when the N64 came out, this was the one console that I remember getting it on the first day, actually putting in the reservation to get it on the first oh, day. Oh, man. I, sa I saved up uh, my allowance for like six months straight just to, so that I could do this. It was like the first console that I bought with my own money, too. Do you still have it? No, I don't. Oh. I know. It's, it's so sad that I sold this stuff. College, your priorities yeah. change. So anyway, the, I bought the N64 and I bought Mario 64 with it, and of course I went home and played it for hours on end as soon as I got back. And it was just, it was such a revolutionary game. It was, it was a 3D game. Uh, it handled so fluidly. And the way that they used the joystick was just so much different than anything else that you've ever done with a joystick before. The way that Mario jumped, the way that he ran, the way that he reacted to every little motion that you did with your thumb to control the, the joystick was really cool. Um, another game that um, you get different endings, or well, maybe not different endings, but different rewards, uh, depending on how you beat the level. Like each level, you could beat it like three or four different ways. And of course, if you complete the game you get all 120 stars you get to see Yoshi at the end so yeah. a little cherry on top really I didn't really care so much about seeing Yoshi I just wanted to feel accomplished and get it all done which I did eventually and then you get this special triple jump yeah and uh, 120 men I think oh do you yeah nice Yoshi gives you 120 men to go play with and just exploring that whole castle yeah those levels are huge mm -hmm. And there was also uh, the battles with Bowser I thought were really cool also. I mean, they were all basically the same. You pick him up by his tail, you swing him around, you launch him into one of the little um, grenade ball type things. I don't know exactly what they're called, like bombs. Um, like I said, they were all basically the same, but it was just so much different than anything that it had come out before it. So I want to give it some mad props. It also looked very pretty too. The and, colors on yeah. the game were great. And those Bowser levels were heck of hard. Yeah, they were. They were fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember being scared when I played them because of the heights. Remember um, Super Mario Sunshine, how you had that water pack? And then there's some levels they take the water pack away, so it's basically you're playing Mario, um, like a Bowser level, and mm. it's half a hard. Brad would get so frustrated with this. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
the other thing, well, I just want to mention one last thing about Mario 64. The the C buttons that were on the uh, the N64 controller, you could use it to change the angle of the uh, the camera shot, which was also incredibly revolutionary. Mm-hmm. Nothing like that. I'd, I've never seen anything like that before. So, mad yep. props to Mario 64. Yeah, Lakitu, didn't he hold yep. the camera? Yeah, That's he did. Tight. So that was my number two as well. Um, I think that what I liked most about it is going and trying to find all the stars. Yeah. Uh, one level I actually absolutely hate is a clock level yeah uh but other than that the game has so many secrets so many things to find you jump in a princess picture and go to a secret slide and slide down her fallopian tubes <laughs> so much sex <laughs> it's like you turn into like a horn dog when you get sick yeah <laughs> that was actually probably one of the most frustrating levels for me were those slide levels where you had to like collect all the coins or whatever mm-hmm. Like and if you miss one little coin, it's like you're fucked. You had to do it all over again. Yeah. The the level that frustrated me the most was the one that first introduced the hat. When you look up in the sun and you start flying and you have to get all the coins and mm-hmm. stuff, the red coins like fly through them all before your power runs out. Yeah. We eventually did it, but that game had so... Like the Bowser levels, the boss battles could have been so much worse. Yeah. They actually nailed it. That, that, I thought it was cool that they incorporated the, the hat actually into the, the gameplay as well. Like, if he lost his hat, he would lose it, like a certain power. Which, again, on that Mario Brothers parkour thing, you mentioned something about yeah. how it sucked, but they kept losing their hat. Like, yeah. well, he actually does lose his hat occasionally, so yeah, that, it really, didn't really bother me. Yeah, on the game, he actually does, too, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Hmm. What's your uh, number two? Uh, Mega Man 64. I'm not familiar with that game. That's Mega Man Legends, isn't it? For yeah. PlayStation? Kind of cheating. Yeah. Why? Because I could have put a Resident Evil 2 on there. You could have, because there's a Resident Evil 2 for 64. But Mega Man Legends is awesome. Or I Mega never, Man 64. I've never played the 64 version. Neither have I. But <laughs> it's... <laughs> I basically <laughs> played it on the PlayStation. Yeah, but you don't know if it's choppy. I'm sure it didn't run as smooth as the PlayStation. It didn't matter. It mixed my <laughs> favorite type of genre, like randomized dungeon based games with Mega Man you can't get much better than that uh, so you, it's Mega Man in the distant distant future uh, the world is uh, covered in water and this Mega Man goes around he's a treasure hunter and you have to uh, go through different levels and find all this different treasure there's secret treasure there's uh, you have to get upgrade your treasure hunting license and you take on tasks for doing that and you have to beat certain uh like there's a dungeon it's like a training dungeon you have to beat the training dungeon in a certain amount of time to get a higher rank in your license and if you uh and each time you start at like d and each time you increase the um, dungeon gets harder and it gets frustrating but it's fun you find like um recyclables and you turn them into strong weapons yeah you actually level up your weapons based on your the gems you find you mm-hmm. cost money and yeah, it's a pretty cool game. I mean, I just I wouldn't put it on my list. Oh, and then uh, in Mega Man Legends uh, two, even though it's not on sixty four, you actually get to make Zero's saber as a weapon. It's like a type. I think you do that on the first one too, but I don't think it's called Zero Saber. Mm-hmm. It's just called a sword or something. Oh, okay. But that introduced Tronbon and the minions. Mm-hmm. That's the uh, Servbots. The Servbots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. I like the ending too. Yeah. Do we all have the same number one? Oh, I'm pretty sure it's he- <laughs> it's Hexen sixty four. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm sure I don't have the same number what? one as you guys. No way! It didn't even make your top five. It made number six. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> all right. Well, mine is Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Of course. Um, I have, the only reason Majora's Mask isn't on my list is because I haven't played it yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's on my to play list but I haven't gotten to it yet it's your number one of also, course right, yeah. okay. um, I mean it's one of the greatest games in history I don't know how it doesn't make your top five I don't really get that i never actually been able to play through it twice I, I just can't get past that water level I don't like it oh it's not that bad I don't like it and it's I don't remember it being that bad I, I think that of course my favorite parts are Goma and Ganon mm-hmm. the first and last boss Huh. What about Dark? What about Dark Link? Yeah. <laughs> That's he's in the water temple. Yeah, he's half. I think he's halfway through, isn't he? Yeah. He's not even the boss of the temple. No. 
Is Darkling like it's in like a different dimension type thing, or is that what? What do you find Darkling? I don't he's remember. like in a big lake that you can stand on. Or yeah, but it looks water. like it's like a different dimension because there's like you don't see anything around it. Yeah, or anything. yeah, and he like uh, sneaks up behind you with red eyes or something. Mm. So anyway, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know what Brad's on. I think he's just too sick to think rationally. <laughs> That's probably what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything about the game ruled, really. I mean, you got to ride a horse. That was one of the big selling points, and it really worked out well. Having Link, Link ride around on Epona, uh, it in, introduced a lot of songs, um, all the different things that he could play on the ocarina, and, and the different abilities and different things he could do with the different songs. Um, Fishing. Fish. I wasn't really into the fishing, but um, you also had Navi, the little fairy that followed you around. She was kind of annoying, but she actually made it so that if you were to stop playing the game and pick it up like a month later, you could just press the little C button. And she'll tell you exactly what you're supposed to be doing. It kind of kept you on course. So I appreciated that. And she also allowed you to Z, do the Z targeting, mm-hmm. which was another very revolutionary thing. Uh, I've never seen anything like that before. It allowed you to focus your energy on one particular enemy. And you didn't have to do, use the Z targeting. You could try to beat him on your own just by uh, using the joystick. But the Z targeting was a really cool feature that they introduced in that game. I think that's the only way you could use a jump slash, isn't it? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It also introduced the, uh, the Gerudo uh, tribe which is still around in all the Zelda games now. It's primarily a female tribe, right? Mm, yeah. And, uh, Gan- Ganondorf is a member of the Gerudo tribe. He's like one of very few males that's a member of the tribe. So He's I guess, a stallion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the King of Thieves, uh, Ganondorf. I, I, don't, I don't know what you're smoking, dude. <laughs> that, it's got to at least make your top five. And that whole... Um... The Gerudo uh, Valley, when you have to sneak around and not get caught because they take really your cool, weapons. Yeah. yeah. So totally. let's let's hear it. Number one. What do you think it is? Mischief makers. Mischief makers. <laughs> oh man. What the fuck? Shake shake. <laughs> Basically, you play as a robot bunny thing named Marina, and you go around sending, uh, <laughs> saving these uh, cloudy and little blob things from uh, the evil scientists. They have a lot of cool boss battles. You ride on top of a cat while shooting a jackal, <laughs> like a giant monster jackal. And That's not just any monster jackal. That's Cerebus Alpha. Through fire, justice is served. Yeah. That, they had a lot of cool quotes in that game. Um, one of the main reasons is because it's it's uh, like Mario World, level 1-1, one, 1-2, one, 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 and depending on how fast you beat the level, you get uh, gems awarded. The more gold gems you get, the better the ending you get. And you could see all the people turn from their robot form to their human form. Did you ever get all the gems? No. I that, looked at it on YouTube, though. That uh, one, you have to do the foot race. I don't think we ever got that one. Yeah. That one sucked. Yeah, so th- that was... It, it, the controls were really fluid. The storyline was cool. So I put that as my number one. It's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even heard of that game, Mr. Makers. It, it did make my honorable mentions because it is a really fun game. Shirts. Okay. <laughs> That's why I made my honorable men- mentions and not number one. <laughs> uh, any other honorable mentions? Yeah, I've got, uh, of course, Majora's Mask. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the Odwalla boss in that. The first boss where he jumps around and he goes, Adol, what? Adol, oh, yeah. what? That's cool. Yeah. Uh, also, I just grouped these games together Banjo Kazooie, Banjo yeah. Tooie, Donkey Kong 64. Basically all the same game, just different characters. <laughs> it's like Mario 64 uh, with all the open levels, but what not about the good. Flying Dragon? What are you talking about? That fighting game that you always used to oh, play? Oh, that game was fun. Because you got to find like different items, like heck of rare items, yeah. when you fought people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I always picked the guy who looked like Van Damme. Yeah. That's cool. It was called uh, Flying Dragon, I think. Uh, and of course, Hexen. Texan sucks. <laughs> it's That's like Eye of the Beholder. It, it is like that. It's a first person. You could pick a, a cleric who's like a um, like a paladin kind of a mage, a, a mage and a warrior. And I was like, and it's basically first person like Doom. You go around trying to beat levels, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what to do. I was like, I found a strategy guide somewhere. Did Did you really put that on your honorable mention? I did. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I found a strategy guide somewhere for like two bucks, and I was like, I'm just going to play through this game with a strategy guide. 
And you still can figure it out on level two, the metal level? No, there, there's one level. I got pretty far, but there's one level where you can't finish it. Like, it, yeah. it's sealed off. Like, you couldn't beat the game. So I don't know if you could actually beat that game ever. Or but there's, or maybe the strategy guide was wrong, but that's the only game I really um, used the strategy guide just to beat, and it, I still didn't beat it. Um, Duke Nukem 64. Oh, yeah, that game was Hard cool. Bombs. That, that game was pretty cool. Um, that's all really I could think of. I, I mentioned this game last week, or maybe it was the week before. Uh, Mace mm-hmm. is uh, another fighting game that I really enjoyed. I played that a lot with Aaron Gerwer. Um, really, really a dark version of a fighting game. It was a three dimensional type of fighting game, also. Um, Mortal Kombat 64. I really, or actually, not Mortal Kombat 4. Was it called Mortal Kombat 64? It was a three dimensional version of the Mortal Kombat franchise. Generally, I'm not really that big into the three dimensional fighting games, but I think Mortal Kombat 4 did a really good job with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the the basic ones like Super Mario 64. I thought was, or excuse me, Super Mario Kart, Mario Kart 64. Excuse me, was a good game. Uh, there was one other that I wanted to mention. Did you ever play Pilot Wing 64? No. no. Uh, I liked that game quite a bit actually. Yeah, there's a few all... secrets in that game. Probably. I never like beat it, but it was just a fun game to play and just mm-hmm. pass a few minutes. There's also a game called like Battle Core or something like that. Blast that? Core. Blast Core. That's that what game. Cheney got a boner off that game. Yeah, that's probably where I played it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get. I didn't get quite a hard on that he did, but it, it was a fun game. Man, that guy was like, I got the platinum medal on Mars. Like, what? Well, you can get medals in that game? Yeah, and then, so we went back and we were trying to get all the medals because he, he got them. We're like, this is fucking impossible to figure out. Yeah, you play the um, that one Confederate car, like the Dukes of Hazard car, mm-hmm. and you have to do mm-hmm. the races. And the, Basically, the game is a giant atomic bomb is going through the world, and you have to clear a path for it, a right, safe right, path. Right. And you have to use your bulldozer to swipe buildings down and all this crap. It mm-hmm. was pretty fun. It's a fun game. Yeah. Destruction. Nice. I'm sure that'll come up. Not as mu- not as good as the other one. <laughs> back in 23. When you were just like, boom! <laughs> Comic relief. Yeah. Can you stop? <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's more, but I, I didn't write anything down. There was a Worms game for it. Worms Armageddon. Really? Yeah. I never... I uh, Armageddon was the one that's for Dreamcast. There is. There's uh, on my list. I don't know. Maybe it's World Party. Is it Armageddon oh, or yeah, World, yeah. Party? World Party? That game's fine. And um, Mario Party. Yeah. Maybe Mario Party. Uh, I love that game. got so many dang blisters playing those games. Yeah. <laughs> using the controller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mario Party's cool. So how is Brad Grandpa? It's like a funny. <laughs> Didn't you guys see it? I saw it. I don't think Brad saw it yet. Man. I like... think it would have been a little bit better if they didn't exaggerate how long... Uh, bad grandpa's balls were. Oh yeah, because it looked totally unrealistic. Like if it looked realistic, I think it would have been a lot more, yeah. a lot, lot funnier. Yeah, because that was one. Of, that was probably the funniest scene for me. Was when he went into that strip club <laughs> and exposed himself. <laughs> yeah, I wish we could go into it more, but I don't want to spoil it for Brad. The movie, it's funny. So uh, when I Melissa and I went, so we had to get daycare. My uh, cousin Darla watched Rosa while we were at the movie. Uh, while she was there, her boyfriend Luis has an Xbox. And he has a you know re- a repertoire of games. Did you ask him what's wrong with him? <laughs> uh, so, for I don't know how it came up, but Rosa was looking through his games, and I guess I guess maybe they were looking for something for her to play or something for her to do. And she she looked through his games, and I was so proud to hear that she said Mega Man. Oh. She found the Mega Man game in the Xbox repertoire. I was like, why is it on the Xbox? Yeah. But she, she somehow found it and they played it. So Mega Man 9, maybe? It, I think it was a disc. Maybe it was like some uh, sort of collection game or anniversary hmm. game. I don't know. Yeah. That's cool. But she found it, so I was I was really proud to hear that my daughter found that. That's always great to hear. Yeah. Like Mia, when she kept saying, Mario, Mario, Mario I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because she's behind a baby gate um, in the kitchen. And Mario. Like, and all of a sudden, you look in the, like on the stack of cans, it's Mario on a Campbell's soup can that she's yeah. pointing out. It's funny how they do that. Yeah. Rosa does that shit all the time. She, I also learned she knows the words to Call Me Maybe by uh, Carly Rae. That's Jackson. heck of tight. Yeah. That's a cool song. Yeah. It's kind of gay, but I like it. 
But yeah, the movie was hilarious. Um, they're definitely biting Sasha Baron Cohen style. But yeah, they are. It, to me, that movie, the interactions between Johnny Knoxville and the kid were probably the most funny part. The the reaction of the uh, the non actors mm-hmm. wasn't as nearly as funny as it was in like Borat or Pura, yeah to me. Uh, so I mean, they, they tried to get that feel, but it didn't quite get there for me. I thought it was, I thought uh, the things that actually Johnny Knoxville was doing was funnier than, it, the, yeah. than the uh, the reaction of his audience. Yeah, they didn't even need an audience; they could have just filmed it in an empty studio. It'd still be funny. Yeah, the, the the reactions just weren't as radical as they were in like Borat. Yeah, right now. Who, I don't know how much how produced those things were, but. It, it, Sasha Baron Cohen just did a much better job of it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that a couple of the scenes were filmed in Sacramento? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I saw that someone pointed it out to me that, uh, like the when they were fishing on the bridge. Yeah, that last scene. Is that what the tower, the tower bridge, the I five bridge? What is it called? It's that green bridge. I think the tower bridge is the, the gold uh, one. The gold one. Yeah, I don't know what the if it has a name. It's the bridge that connects uh, Discovery Park to mm-hmm. downtown Sacramento. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what else was filmed there? I saw. I noticed a couple of Labu signs mm-hmm. when he was like trying to pick up girls, which he's doing throughout the whole entire movie. <laughs> but uh, oh, think... the uh, bingo hall—that's the one off oh, the really? floor in Boulevard. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I, I there was one scene where he was outside. They were like, I don't remember exactly what they were doing, but I saw Labu signs, and I'm pre- pretty sure Labu is just mm-hmm. a Sacramento chain. I don't think it's a national chain at mm-hmm. all. So I guess they did a lot of filming in Sacramento. Who knows why? Check this out. Nice. You got under 300? Yeah. Even though three times at Fuji, um, I still made it under 300 pounds today. Very nice. Yeah. So I was pretty excited about that. Cool pics, cool pics. Yes. <laughs> My favorite part. <laughs> so uh, who won last night or th- two Thursday? Who was it between? The Colts and the Titans, I think. I heard who won. I seriously I don't know. I, I guess I tuned out. I think the Colts won. I can check. Okay, so uh, Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans. Uh, I picked the Colts. Uh, Indianapolis and Colts comes before Tennessee and Titans. Coincidence? I think not. You're talking about alphabetically? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills, two New York teams. You won one already. Tied. Indianapolis won. Uh, so two New York teams. Guess what? what? Fuck New York. <laughs> Obama's going to drop on New York Sunday. Nobody wins. Oh, wow. <laughs> Obama? Uh, no, a bomb. <laughs> oh, a bomb. <laughs> Insider information. I don't there. think that's a very good gambling <laughs> strategy. You probably... <laughs> Not gonna win much if that's really your pick. I, <laughs> Although ties do happen very rarely. Uh, Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. Orange versus orange. This one's mm. tough, but not really. The Both go- the Ohio teams too, right? Cleveland, Cincinnati. That's true. Oh, I didn't even take that into Maybe consideration. Maybe the state color is orange. Maybe um, orange and brown. Uh, the glorified kitty cats will flush the Browns down the toilet. <laughs> Bengals. Uh, Washington Redskins and the Philadelphia Eagles. Come on. <laughs> Detroit Lions and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Wait, 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 wait. Come on, what? <laughs> come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, Eagles, of course. Okay. It's good rationale. <laughs> Why, for the whole U.S. thing against the Native Americans? Huh? No. It's, I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Uh, As if. <laughs> <laughs> per se. Uh, Detroit Lions and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Rooting for the underdog here, picking the Lions. Why do you say they're the underdog? Huh? Why do you say that they're the underdog? Aren't they? No? I, I, don't, I don't know what this, the line is, but they definitely have a much better record than the oh, I think they beat the Cowboys. Oh, I thought they had the the worst record in the league. I thought they were 0-7. The, the, the Lions? Lions? Oh, they're 6-3. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the only reason I know is because I'm looking at it. I'm not, I'm no, yeah. I don't know everyone's standing it or anything. Uh, Atlanta Falcons against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Have you ever seen Bizarre Food with Andrew Zimmer? Yes. Zimmer? 
Have you seen the American version when he was in Alaska? Yeah. Well, I've seen the American version. Did you see the one when someone was practicing falconeering? No. Hunting with falcons? Actually, I did. That was tight. Um, <laughs> I saw this falcon dive bomb this pheasant, <laughs> and uh, when they ran over to where the pheasant ra- was, of course, and uh, Zimmern was like, <gasps> from the running, but uh, <laughs> when they get to the pheasant, and the uh, falconer pulls out a piece of meat and gives it to the falcon, and uh, he takes the pheasant, and then they go cook the pheasant. He's like, the falcon doesn't care as long as he, as long as he gets his fill. He doesn't care if he eats rotten meat or regular meat. Uh, so then uh, they do this to ensure bullet-free meat so they don't shoot the pheasant. Uh, therefore, I'm picking the bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it a falcon that we saw at medieval times? Remember they did that presentation? Yep. Yeah, the lady did falconeering and was uh, giving him meat and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I like the little hat helmets they wear. Yeah. The blinders. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you still pick the bucks. Yeah. It was like one in seven. <laughs> uh, Arizona Cardinals against Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, let's break this down. How would you shorten Cardinals? Cards. Okay. How you shorten Jaguar. Jag. Jag. Jag, right? So when you think of it, like there's these people, oh, I got a Jag. I drive a Jag. <laughs> what do you think of a stupid car? A douchebag. Yeah. So what's better, a deck of Dragon Ball cards or a stupid Jag? It's a deck of Dragon Ball cards. Car- Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> Now this one I'm gonna have you guys close your eyes. We're gonna take you somewhere. The Oakland Raiders against Houston Texans. I believe they're playing in Houston, but just just bear with me. Close your eyes. Uh, you get off uh, the the freeway and you see Oakland. You're like, oh, I'm in a nice safe area. The sun is setting. You get out of your car and you're like. Uh, click click you lock your car like oh let's walk across the street to get some in and out or some Carl's Jr. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you think nothing nothing of it you notice that the door is locked at 6 p.m. you're like man why are they closed already <laughs> then you hear then you hear what side <laughs> <laughs> you just got shot in the face because you're in Oakland after dark <laughs> Therefore, I'm picking the Houston Texans. It's making me dizzy a lot. The San Diego Chargers against Miami Dolphins. You would think I'd pick the Dolphins uh, based on last week's uh, decision with the Bucks and the Dolphins. <laughs> Uh, the D- Dolphins also have home court advantage this game. <laughs> but guess what? They don't. <laughs> what do you get when you put a surge of electricity oh, in the Atlantic Ocean? <laughs> All the dolphin you could eat. <laughs> Going with the Chargers. Uh, San Francisco 49ers against the New Orleans Saints. Uh-oh. Someone called me. <laughs> I got an insider tip. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> Wednesday night at 8.27 p.m., the call only lasted 44 seconds. This informant, who shall remain lameless, advised that he just saw Drew Brees doing a commercial for NyQuil. <laughs> Guess who's going to have a uh, better night's sleep and be well-rested? <laughs> Drew Breesy or Kirkpatrick? <laughs> 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 Uh, Drew Brees. Yeah, I'm going for the same. <laughs> uh, Green, Green Bay Packers against the New York Giants. Remember that bomb going uh, to glitter at New York? Moving on. <laughs> Minnesota Vikings against the Seattle Seahawks. Battle of the cold weather states. Uh, I just put two and two together. Who came from Seattle? Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. Guess what franchise came from Seattle? Starbucks. See a trend here? <laughs> Do you see a trend? No. Well, let me spell it out for you. <laughs> it's actually very obvious what's going to happen here. Uh, <laughs> I think number 12 of the Hawks is going to Cobain it at the 50-yard line at halftime show. 
What do you think I mean by Cobain it? Suicide? No. He's going to sing a song <laughs> in a horribly grovel, grovelly voice that's going to lower the song's integrity, which will lower the morale. It will cause the fans to turn against them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going for the Vikings. Oh wow, that's an upset pick. <laughs> I hope you're right. Baltimore Ravens against the Chicago Bears. Manhood is going to play a huge part in this game. <laughs> Brad, what do you think defines manhood? What am I supposed to say? <laughs> that's, a, that's whatever I think manhood. Yeah. Um, like hair and strongness and strength. Nick, what do you think manhood is? A large penis. Interesting. <laughs> I'm picking the Ravens. <laughs> Wait. Kansas City Chiefs against Broncos. Didn't we do this last week? Cowboys against Indians? Remember, like, woo, against the advanced technology? I don't know. That sounds right. It must be the Redskins. I think you're right. I think it okay. was the Redskins. Broncos all the way. <laughs> Cow- I'll wait for some. Cowboys will always uh, destroy the engines. <laughs> you realize the Chiefs are undefeated, right? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, pa- Not for this week. <laughs> Patriots against Carolina Panthers. You know what bugs me about this team? About which team? Panthers. What? They're so wishy washy. <laughs> are they. North Carolina, South Carolina. <laughs> it seems to change like four times a year. <laughs> so like, like the Oilers? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going with the Patriots. So take that to the bank. All right. I'm, I'm definitely going to Vegas now. To place my bets. Because <laughs> I would never online gamble. That's immoral. <laughs> Can you call Vegas and make a bet over the phone? I don't think they allow that. Uh, they did that on The Simpsons. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Did they get in trouble? No. Oh. Are you sure they didn't just call bookies? No, I think he said, Vegas, put me 50 on black, and then they lost. <laughs> and he was like a mad. <laughs> That's pretty random. <laughs> I'm sure it was not, like, true or anything. <laughs> it being a cartoon and all. <laughs> yeah. So what are you guys doing this tonight? I'm going to go over to Mike Buttons and watch UFC. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. We should have that guy on. He's hilarious. Yeah, he is funny. I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to have to go get some treasure. I got something in the works. What are you talking about? Some treasure. No, no. But what specific? Not like what is it, but what do you mean? Like what's in the works? It's somewhere I have to meet someone. That's so fucking tight. <laughs> I'm heck excited. <laughs> I gotta yeah. talk to someone about this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that'll do it for this week's episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting. <laughs>